if you have charges like electrons, 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 with a force which is enormous. Hey, welcome to the Electronics Lab. In this video, I want to explore how capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor relates to the electric field between the plates. What we see here is a picture of a parallel plate capacitor, and the equation on the right shows how to determine the capacitance based on the physical characteristics of the capacitor. C stands for capacitance, A is for the overlapping plate area, D is the separation distance between plates, epsilon is the permittivity of the insulator that is between the parallel plates. In this case, there's nothing between the plates, so I'm using epsilon naught, which represents the permittivity of free space. And I'll get to a description of what permittivity is in more detail in another capacitor video. But for now, you just need to know that it's a property of the insulator between the plates. And to understand where this equation comes from, let's go all the way back to the basics of electricity. All properties of electricity stem from the electric charge, and through experimentation, analysis, and mathematics, we have developed really good models of the properties and behavior of electric charge. There are two types of charges positive and negative, and the names are arbitrary and arguably incorrect. Thanks, Ben Franklin. But their properties are pretty well defined. Unlike charges are attracted to each other, positive is attracted to negative, and like charges repel. Positive repels positive, and negative repels negative. And when dealing with individual point charges, it's easy to quantify the forces that attract and repel by using Coulomb's law, which states that the force between point charges is equal to a constant K times the product of the two charges divided by the square of the distance between them. The thing about this equation, though, is it only works with a couple of point charges, but when dealing with many, many charges like you would have with parallel plates, it's easier to combine the effects of all the charges together and use the concept of an electric field. And this animation here illustrates the idea of an electric field. Anything that's carrying charge is going to contribute to an electric field in space. And that's what this animation is trying to show. So for example, if I go down here and I take a negative charge, and so it's one nanocoulomb, so this is a lot of electrons put together, but all combined together into one point charge. And I'm gonna drop it in the middle here of this field. And right away, you can see the electric field that's generated by that point charge. Uh, the electric field, by definition, points towards negatives and away from positives. If I add a positive charge to this plane, then the field's made up of the sum of the positive charge and the negative charge contributions. So you can see here, the field is pointing away from the positive and towards the negative. And this sensor here shows the, what the E field, what the electric field is at any point. And you can see that as I move the sensor around, the magnitude and the direction of the electric field changes. Electric field strength is actually called the electric field intensity. The definition of field intensity is the force that would be exerted on a unit charge at a point in space. So field intensity units are also newtons per coulomb. Now, let's keep this equation for electric field intensity in our back pocket for a minute. And in this electric field animation, let's build up a set of parallel lines of charges with one line being positive and one line being negative. Putting in some positive charge, putting in some negative charge, putting in some positive charge, putting in some negative charge. Positive, positive, negative, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So you can see that the electric field in between the lines is in one direction. And if I was able to build the charges out of the screen as well to give me a set of parallel planes instead of parallel lines, then we would find that the electric field between the plates is more or less uniform. So it takes some calculus to get here, and that's beyond the scope of this video to prove it, but the electric field intensity between parallel plates is equal to sigma over epsilon, where sigma is the charge density, and epsilon is the permittivity of the material between the plates. Now charge density is the number of charges or how many coulombs there are per unit of area. And so if we substitute Q over A into this expression, we get Q over A times epsilon for the electric field intensity. Remember, what I'm trying to do is figure out what the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is based solely on the physical characteristics of the capacitor. Let's remind ourselves what capacitance is. It's the amount of charge that you can get onto the capacitor for each volt of push that you apply to the capacitor. Now let's look at voltage again. Remember voltage is the amount of work done moving a unit of charge. So if I had a positive charge down here at the bottom and I wanted to move it to the top plate through this electric field, I would have to put some amount of work in. And the amount of work is equal to the force I apply while moving the charge times the distance that I move it. So we could also write the voltage out as force times distance over charge. Well, look at this. That F over Q in the equation is the electric field intensity. So another way to consider the voltage 
is that it's the electric field intensity times the distance that the charge is moved through that field. And look what happens here if we substitute in this form of the electric field intensity to the new voltage equation. We get voltage as charge times distance over area times permittivity. So now we are down to the last few steps and we can go back to the equation for capacitance and substitute this version of the voltage equation into the capacitance equation to get capacitance is Q over Q times distance divided by area times permittivity. Those Qs cancel out and with some algebra we get capacitance is the permittivity times A divided by D where A is the plate area, D is the distance between the plates, and epsilon is the permittivity based on the type of material that is in between the plates. So all of those parameters that go into this calculation are based on physical properties of the capacitor itself, which is exactly what I was working towards getting. And that's it. Took a while to get here, but you should now have an understanding of why the capacitance equation for a parallel plate capacitor is the way that it is and fully dependent on its physical makeup. As always, I appreciate you watching. See you soon and take care.